So today um, we're going to, if you need to, the, a copy of the slides, uh, this is the uh, bit.ly for it, 2020-coabe-cit for citizenship. Um, and you can also find that on my website at uscitizenpod.com. And here's the Statue of Liberty with her iPad and her smartphone uh, shining a light to uh, to the world and to our students. Okay, so uh, today the participants will um, identify uh, the latest citizenship resources in the form of mobile apps, videos, podcasts, websites, online courses, textbooks, and more. By adapting and incorporating these digital resources, Participants will be able to implement learning strategies appropriate for citizenship, online classes, blended learning distance, uh, uh, learning environments, or directed self-study. <laughs> so um, before I begin, I wanted to tell you a little bit about the format of the uh, class. I'm gonna discuss the government, uh, government source uh, websites I'm going to go on to talk about our community-based resources. I'm going to talk about a couple citizenship classes, including my own. Then I'm going to go on and talk about ESL citizenship resources. And um, we're going to talk about specific channels on YouTube that are going to be appropriate and how to use the vi those videos in your distance learning classes. And um, so, uh, during during the webinar, I'm going to stop and I'm going to ask for uh, any questions. So, um, if there, if you have some special concerns, please put them into your Q and A box now. The first website uh, that I wanted to talk about is USCIS.gov. I don't know about you, but when I saw this red banner, USCIS offices temporarily closed due to the public, I felt like I got punched into the gut. So um, it was really shocking, but I'm really glad that USCIS, USCIS took the initial steps very early to safeguard not only their workforce, but to the, the population that they serve. So they closed to the public, but they're continuing to do uh, behind the scenes uh, work uh, constantly processing uh, their applications. One of the first things that I do as a citizenship teacher is that I usually give my students an online uh, an online tour of USCIS.gov website. I talk to them about how to file online and the uh, uh, the process with that. These I t I show them checking this their case status online, checking processing times, et cetera, et cetera. These have been particularly important, especially with office closings when, as states and local municipalities start lifting their uh, their um, shelter in place restrictions. This some of the offices um, may be opening at different times, so this is going to be important to watch. So USCIS.gov, even though that they're not publicly receiving people, they are still reaching out and providing quality information to the, the people that they are serving. Of course, I want to talk about, everybody knows about USCIS Citizenship Resource Center. Uh, of course, we know about learners, educators, and organizers now, organizations. I would not initially send a student directly to this. They may get lost even if they figure out, okay, I need to go to the learner section. I want to learn about citizenship. I want to apply for the test. That kind of stuff is a little bit straightforward. What I am particularly interested in as an educator, of course, I want to get access to the lesson plans. And I have been using their lesson plans not only with their beginning, but their intermediate lesson plans, and also their new N400 lesson plans about dates or a family or uh, those kind of things. I really wanted to emphasize today that there are two other uh, two other sections of this uh, 
this website there I probably overlook, program development and professional development. Program development is particularly important as we move our classes online and we're like, wait a minute, what are we supposed to be doing? If you check back and take a look at some of the, the PDFs that they had related to designing an adult education program, or if you take a look at some of the professional development uh, um, quick papers that they wrote about how to teach vocabulary, how to train vo uh, volunteers, how to uh, teach vocabulary. That's going to be very, very helpful and easily adaptable to the digital to the digital environment. So again, please take a look at these um, these and dig a little bit deeper beyond the lesson plans at USCIS.gov/citizenship. Uh, Particularly, I would like you to take a look at, um, they had, I believe it was under program development, they have a, a, two new videos about setting up your citizenship classroom. Now, it's physically that they're, they're setting it up, but they have some things that are common to the virtual world. They want you to have a staging area where their students can come in, get their information, and basically turn in information. And we need to have that when we set up our digital environment as well. So please take a look at those two new videos that are um, in there. And um, the URLs to these are in the, the show notes, or the, excuse me, the PowerPoint notes. I want to continue on in, I live and die by preparing the oath uh, from Smithsonian. Uh, there's one video for each one of the, uh, for each one of the USCIS citizenship uh, questions. However, the thing is, is that a lot of our students access information through their cell phones, so they cannot use this, and they because they can't use because the cell phones cannot process flash. So what I have been doing is I've been going up to the transcripts, and every day uh, the questions that I discuss in my daily lesson plan. I use the transcripts and I copy it into another document and I add charts or graphic information that will illustrate that point. So even though the students cannot watch those videos themselves on their cell phones, they are able to access the information via the transcripts if uh, as they're being released. So um, I've been doing this in English, and I've also been translating them into Spanish, and I'm looking for feedback on the translations that I've been producing in Spanish. Another place that I've been going to get supplement my information from uh, the Smithsonian is USAGov. Now, initially, when this, this website was first started, it was very, very awkward, but it has really improved and really streamlined. Um, there's a lot of information in here about government resources. So if you want to dig in and talk about the, the, um, the departments under the cabinet, so you're talking about the executive branch, but if you want to dig in and say, well, the executive branch is just not the president, it's also the departments under the cabinet secretaries, you, this is the place that you can dig into this. This is the place where you'll find infographics about how uh, uh, the relationship between uh, the different branches. So here is a really good one-stop place for teachers and students to go to find out more information beyond simply the, the information provided in textbooks or in the USCIS M638 or in the Smithsonian uh, transcripts to find out more information about our federal, state, and local government. I love the National Constitution Center in Philadelphia. They have a really great podcast, uh, We the People. Uh, but um, they have this, uh, they put out a yearly civics calendar that tracks all the, like the birthdays of the amendments or birthdays of presidents. This year, they're focusing in on uh, the uh, 100th anniversary of the suffrage uh, of uh, suffrage for women. So they have some really great information on here. And I've been incorporating this information into my classes because 
If you take a look at the USCIS uh, curriculum, uh, strictly, there's only one person in there, Susan B. Anthony. However, if you dig deeper, there's a lot of women who are who are just under the surface uh, with Congress pe- women, uh, 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 pursuit of legislation on behalf, behalf of the rights of women and minorities. So please take a look at this civics calendar and use it to inform your own uh, curriculum about digging deeper into civics and uh, history. Another place that I found some lesson plans beside, besides the Smithsonian, and let me, I'm sorry, let me track, backtrack that for, just for a second. The Smithsonian has some really great lesson plans under teachers uh, uh, related to the USCIS uh, civics questions. Another great place to find lesson plans is not only at the Senate, and here when you take a look at their art and history section, they have information or many digital displays about women's rights or about particular senators or all sorts of history projects and art projects. This one is at the Senate, and then this one is at history.house, and so they have lesson plans about Black Americans in Congress, Hispanic Americans in Congress, oral history and women in Congress. And I'm looking at these lesson plans and they're so good and absolutely juicy and I would love to use it, but I was like, I can't use this in my classroom because of the limited English of my students. Well, what I've been doing is, one of the great things about COVID-19, I've been going to a lot of webinars. I learned about this new uh, website called Rewordify. So there you can take text and basically simplify the text or use the text to basically identify more difficult vocabulary and use it to develop games and uh, close, um, close exercises. So this is what I've been personally experimenting with uh, website, uh, sorry, uh, with lesson plans that I think uh, is too difficult for my students to initially understand. If I take it and bring it into this program and manipulate it, I've been able to, to deliver some extra content to my students because and they want to see themselves in the USCIS civics and history questions. And this is a way when we talk about Hispanic Americans or women in Congress or African Americans in Congress, now they can see the diversity and the include uh, the diversity and are feeling going to be able to feel included within and uh, the citizenship uh, citizenship curriculum. So please take a look at the, take a look at those old lesson plans that you thought, wow, this would be great if only I could do X, Y, and Z. Take a look at that and take a look at that with Rewordify. I would um, especially do this if I'm looking at the iCivics information. Um, some of the lesson plans that they produce are really, really great, not quite uh, appropriate for ESL classroom. Perhaps with Rewordify, we can start bridging that gap. Uh, um, does anybody have any questions before I continue? Are we okay? Um, there's a few questions here. Okay. One person's asking for tips to manage a citizenship class with low level English learners. Okay. Is it, it depends how the person, uh, um, I have a range of students from very, very low level students to higher students. One of the things that I've been doing is that I've been doing mostly one by one contact by the phone. So I call them and we talk on the phone. Initially that didn't work because the awkwardness of the phone. So doing, making that contact through FaceTime has really helped me reach out to my lower level students. Now, when you talk about providing uh, material to them. I've been delivering that material through my website, US Citizen Pod, and I'm gonna get to that a little bit later. There's a range of materials on there for low level up to the higher level students. 
And I, I want to move from doing FaceTime contact, I want to move into Google Voice because that can track our calls a little bit better. So those students are not trampled when we have our big Zoom, Zoom meetings. They need to still feel included. So you have to go back and forth. I'll give you another example a little bit later on when we get to the classes. Uh, some people are doing some classes on uh, 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 Facebook. So um, I'm gonna, I'll address a little bit more of those concerns in, a, in, the ne in the next section. Is there another question? There's questions specifically about WeWordify, about if it's free, how exactly you use that, explaining it. it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's free. Uh, you copy and paste a text into their um, their engine, and they comes back, and you can, it highlights the more difficult words, and you can specify the level of the words that you want. Now, I have not been able to explore every aspect of it, so I just I simply encourage that person to go, and I think we need to all explore this as citizenship teachers. Great. There's yeah. a question here. Is a DNA test an important in application to prove birth status? Are there any inexpensive testers? If so, I am not familiar with DNA testing. I think the person, the best person, I have never heard about DNA testing. Um, I think the best person to talk to is a, a local legal uh, immigration uh, services person about the DNA testing because. It depends who's saying it, and I've never heard of that, that kind of requirement before. And I do want to take this opportunity to say, hey, we're teachers. We're not lawyers. We're not government officials. And sometimes we have to say, hey, I can't answer these legal questions. I'm going to need to pass you on to somebody else. So having uh, a quick list of uh, good legal uh, and local uh, reputable legal services is going to be critical to your success as a citizenship teacher. Any further questions? Yes. Yeah, so some more questions. Just a question on why, um, why is information translated into Spanish when the students must learn enough English to answer the 100 questions and write and read a sentence in English? Some students can take their, their, uh, the test in their native language. So, um, for instance, we, in California, we have a significant population of people who have been legally here uh, uh, for for many many years, they're older uh, older people. They can take their the tests in their native language, not only in Spanish but in Chinese. I can read Spanish. I can't read Chinese, so that's where my my efforts have been. Great. I would say we can go ahead at this point. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. So the next one I want to. Um, to go on to is Immigrant Legal Resource Center. Uh, they have translation, uh, translations and transliterations of the N-400s and these various languages. Now, you cannot use these, these N-400 forms or these translations to apply, but you, you can use it so students can understand more deeply the vocabulary that they're trying to learn. So this has been very, very helpful. These are free PDFs that they can learn uh, download. Most of these PDFs are based on the N-400 that was released in 2016. So of course there's been slight updates to it, but I think it's enough for them to understand what's going on so they can more fully understand what they're agreeing to. The next one is one of the biggest problems what we had when we had uh, when we had the uh, shelter in place restrictions come in is that a lot of people were left without their textbooks and when they're teaching you're not uh, they may be recording the video and broadcasting it to the public however they're not supposed to be able you're not supposed to be using um, uh, what is what is that called copyrighted material so these are things that you can use to help you get over that hump. And one of them is the, citizen, the citizenship t uh, test book from clinic citizenship uh, from clinic. And what it is, is basically a uh, civics test book 
that basically it's a one by one page. It's a PDF. You can use it in public. You can mark it up. You can distribute it how you can want. And you can you pair this up with USCIS uh, lesson plans, and it's going to work it out really, really well. They also have a um, they also have a, a tech or guide to teaching elders, which has been very helpful for me, especially when we have we have to learn how to um, uh, to tap their the, the elder strength when we're doing the citizenship uh, the citizenship education. Um, uh, clinic has over uh, twenty translations of the civics questions. And this one is really great, Miguel's interview, which is basically a uh, almost like a photo novella about what happens during the naturalization interview, because there's a lot of misinformation about what's going to what actually happens. So taking a look at this and sharing this information with your students, which is free, and uh, it's going to be very very helpful for them. Also, I want to uh, do a shout out to um, the photo novellas from F, uh, consumer.ftc.gov, and they're talking about, they're in Spanish and in English, um, about the, uh, the, the notario scams. So that's going to be very helpful. And again, this is information that you can easily share in your um, online classes and to read and discuss uh, these issues so your students can stay, stay safe. I would also just suggest that you go to um, consumer.ftc.gov for further information in multiple languages about keeping students' information safe and um, scams uh, targeting um, targeting immigra immigrants. So this is information that needs to be imparted during your citizenship classes. And uh, FTC really uh, did a good job on them. I'm gonna move on to the virtual citizenship classes. Is there any questions uh, related to the things I just shared from clinic and ILRC? No, are we okay? Yep, let's okay. go ahead. Okay, I'm going to talk about my own class. So this is my class, Milpitas Adult School. Um, I started um, teaching citizenship, I think, in 2002, 2003. I started, uh, a lot of my students are, were, un, were supposed to come two nights a week, but they're adults with adult uh, responsibilities. They have to go to, they have to work, they have student, uh, they have to take care of their kids. So I started a podcast in 2007 and a um, website uh, to support the podcast. So now I have over 4,000 uh, blog posts about citizenship. So this is um, when I, when the shutdown came, I started a series of lessons and I went from the very beginning uh, basic um, citizenship um, practice interview, like what is your name, where do you live, those kind of things. And I'm building up slowly to uh, get more deeply into this, uh, to the N-400. So we've gone through maybe about 20 uh, practice interviews, and now I'm digging a little bit deeper into the se section by section of the N-400. So here I ha I'm in part 12 right now. I'm talking today about affiliations, so uh, terrorism, communism, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm starting to translate these N-400 sections into Spanish, so I'm asking for feedback on that. So in my citizenship classes, I usually uh, talk about the N-400 first, and then I move on to civics. So here, it is, here we are, and uh, students can access the USCIS uh, lesson plan. They also have, we're, t we're doing about two or three questions a day. Um, we're using the transcript from USCIS. Those the students who can actually watch the videos do watch the videos. Uh, when I present online, I usually do present the videos. But again, we have English and Spanish transcripts of that. And then I always have an integration activity where I'm taking basically a multiple choice N400 questions and I'm pairing it up with some 
um, some questions about related to the topic that we just discussed. And in this case, we're talking about the branches of government. We're starting to now finally release our, our interviews, our practice interviews that we're doing on Zoom. So I released the first one last night. So um, a lot of these, I'm not doing them in a large groups. I'm doing them in very small groups uh, with students doing the practice interviews. And again, they're, we're using trans, uh, um, uh, scripts that I have developed. And you can see these scripts under the N400 PDFs up here. Also for extra credit at the bottom of this, this page that you can't really see, I have extra credit, so some students are barely uh, are very proficient in their English, so they're able to go dig into the VOA Learning English uh, series, American Presidents, and there's different things where they have audio, they have uh, one minute videos, they have articles, so there's a whole diverse collection of from VOA about America's presidents. And then I have further resources, uh, resources about the uh, Asian Pacific um, American Heritage Month. I have uh, resources of, for Ramadan, et cetera, et cetera. So that would be at the bottom of that daily uh, lesson. On the right-hand side of the screen, I have a, a button here that, that has a series of resources for May. So I have resources for Ramadan, Mother's Day, um, Memorial Day, et cetera, et cetera. And this was the uh, PDF that I was referring to that where I divided the N400 up into three, uh, 30, um, 30 in, uh, scripts. When we get into the part 12 scripts, that's where I start using graphics to illustrate some of the points. Um, the closest textbook that I've seen to this was um, Voices of Freedom. If you take a look at their teacher's guide, they have some really great um, practice uh, interviews in the back of that where you're practicing part 12. They have very simple line drawings. Um, so that this is a much cruder version of that, but I did this before they did. So um, they um, also on the top, I have more resources up here. So again, if I'm talking about a daily lesson, I'm expecting my students to practice something from the N400. I'm expecting them to learn one or two, two to three questions from USCIS. I expect them to engage in an a, a integration activity where they pair up the N400 and the um, 100, uh, 100 civics questions together, and there's extra credit information. Um, one of the things is, is that I, I've been doing most of my, my, my uh, contacting my students mostly one by one. Uh, I'm going to be moving to a group class, but still maintaining that one-on-one -on -one connection. I want to give an example from BPSOS, uh, Center for Community Advancement in Westchester. This is one of my uh, a really fine teacher, Brendan Peacock, and he's basically doing some wonderful lessons uh, on Facebook with his students. They have, he has tremendous engagement in this and is really delivering quality content related to citizenship. And uh, US um, BPS OS has other uh, teachers as well who are uh, delivering content on Facebook. So take a look at uh, what they're doing and perhaps that's a really good pattern for your own classes online. I also wanted to do a shout out to Gonzales Adult School. It's a rural school in um, Central California. But a lot of them, um, uh, they had already connected with USCIS, a USCIS officer, about coming down to their school and doing a, um, a, a, a naturalization information seminar. Instead, what they did, they did an online Facebook, uh, Facebook Live uh, 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 session with them that the officer answered the students' questions in English and Spanish about the naturalization process. So it was online, it was live, but then uh, afterwards that they, they took it down because you're not supposed to record the officers. But it was really effective and Gonzalez has just be, really been at the forefront, 
front, constantly delivering online content for adult learners, for uh, uh, students in transition, um, delivering things about food and health care to their students. So again, really great uh, uh, adult school delivering, for, delivering to their, their uh, county. I want to point out, I'm sure you guys know Minnesota literacy, um, and it's like there's not, you can't say enough about these guys, but a lot of people really, really appreciate their, um, their um, uh, kits that they have done related to citizenship, ESL, and they have a new one related to the census. So what these are are PDFs, about 70 pages. They have uh, flashcards there for them to laminate. They have civics content, and most importantly, they have content related to the N400. So here they're basically practicing uh, a section about the N400. They're talking about the appropriate student response, and the person can basically uh, uh, say if the person answered the question or did not answer the question correctly. So this is a really good guideline to see if the student is ready to go in for their own citizenship interview. Now, some people start the student off with this, uh, just hand them the N400 and say, hey, learn this, or they'll give them a really high level uh, script and tell them to learn it. I prefer a much more gradual approach where you're starting out with maybe five or 10 questions and building it up. But you cannot, um, you cannot dispute Minnesota literacy's uh, quality content here. Burlington English. I know uh, I was really excited to see the new content from Burlington English. I'm dying to get into that, but um, English, um, English in America chapters 14 and 15 for the beginning, uh, intermediate and advanced all have uh, practice interviews related to the citizenship interview. So please take a look at this if you're in Burlington or if you have students in Burlington English. And um, in Cambridge Ventures Arcade, this is, um, it used to be Flash, and they converted it now to HTML. And so students can basically um, go up here to the citizenship, um, citizenship um, course, and they can practice information related to the N400 and to the civics content. So you can pair this up with the civics information, of course, that they're learning, uh, I mean, sorry, personal information that they learned earlier, but uh, citizenship here uh, is pretty good content. I was really impressed how uh, thorough it was. Uh, you cannot, when you take a look at the very, very best content, USA Learns is really, really great. So they have a citizenship course in there. Um, really good for uh, front-ended by uh, information about uh, legal, uh, accessing legal um, uh, legal guidance, then they have a section about the N-400, then they have a civic section, and then they have a section about what happens uh, during the interview. I think the best section is the N-400 section, particularly when it's related to the juicier questions related to family and to the crime, because a lot of our students have not been the most perfect angels in the world. So they really enjoy digging into the problems that these students uh, or USA Learns has presented or the scenarios that they have presented related to irregularities around family, around crime, et cetera, et cetera. So this has been very, uh, very uh, good section and they've updated um, their um, oral, activities and they've updated sort of their videos and they've uh, added a new course English one plus which is basically from VOA uh, learning English number one but they've added a lot of interactive inter activities and so I think this is a comparable level to help your students get ready for the citizenship interview and it's a really nice stepping st stepping from level one to the level two course that they have in USA Learns. USA Learns is also working on a, um, 
a new product, which was basically, um, it was the old Welcome to America book that was uh, produced in 14 languages by USCIS. They're looking to put that information onto the web, and it's going to be, I think it's going to complement a lot of stuff that you see on USA USA dot gov. So please look forward to this. And um, we have one of our uh, one of the participants today, Andrea, uh, can help you with any of those questions. So please contact her at usalearns.org. Finally, this is a new uh, a new program. It's from USA. Uh, hello, uh, it's from Portland. It's funded by the Rockefeller Foundation. And it's basically a series of ESL classes and citizenship classes. Now, I've only seen uh, civics information from here, and there's 30 lessons related to civics. But they did have a section in there about the, some of the more difficult N400 Part 12 vocabulary. So this is new, and this would be really good for self-directed. Just as, excuse me, let me step back to USA Learns. USA Learns, a teacher can basically develop, create a class in there and basically monitor student uh, progress. Or a student can go in there and uh, go through the information themselves. However, I'm going to suggest it's better to have a teacher watch the student go through this because there's so much content on USA Learns, they might they might get uh, they might get bogged down and stuck. Okay, so making sure that a student goes through there and that their questions are going to be answered is really good. I can speak to the quality of the USA Learn stuff. I'm not sure about the quality of the USAHello.org. It looks really really good. The 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 um, lessons that I've seen look really really great. Um, Again, I only, I'm only seeing the civics content and not so much of the N400 content. And let me stop there. Do you have any questions? Um, there's a number of questions here. Okay. Um, Paula asks, she says, I need some short, simple, intermediate lessons to work in since only a quarter of my students are applying for citizenship. Okay. So... It depends what kind of lessons they're looking for. So I would look at USCIS. I would look at the transcripts at the, I would look at the lesson plans for um, uh, the Smithsonian uh, ready for the interview, or no, preparing for, preparing for the oath. I would look at um, ESL library. I would look some of the ways that I paired stuff up um, on uscitizenpod.gov. And if she has some, some specific units that she wants to address, she can email me. I'd be happy to help her on that. Okay, great. Will the teachers be able to sample the software products for free until the end of the school year? I'm not sure what this person's referring to. It depends to. on the software products. I have seen nothing but free until the end of the, the, um, the, the year. USALearns.org is absolutely free. My stuff is free. Smithsonian is free. Um, anyway, great. Um, one, quite, one attendee says, what did you mean by copying transcripts into mobile phone format? If you had put a P, okay, so um, what I've been doing is, uh, if you take a look at the, um, the transcripts from US, uh, from, um, sorry, preparing the oath, Smithsonian preparing the oath, I am not going to give a student 41 pages of transcript. It's just not going to happen. What I'm going to do is going to copy only two, uh, two questions from that transcript. I'm going to put it into a separate document. I'm going to put it, uh, I'm going to save it as a PDF, and then I'm going to share it so a student can read it much more easily on their mobile phone. Great. I, I don't want to, there's 25 questions still. So what I'm thinking is I'll ask just a few more and then what okay. we can do, if, you, if you're okay with this, Jennifer, is we can share out, if there's any additional questions at the end of this webinar, we can share them out to everybody when we send that email out. In, Absolutely. In okay, so great. Great. Um, another question here, any idea what the 10 new civics questions will be effective in October, 2020? 
Okay, so originally the 100, they were going to deliver the civics questions of the December uh, 2020. Uh, they were piloting earlier in this month, I mean, sorry, earlier in this year, and that has been stopped. The pilot was stopped because of the, the COVID-19 restrictions. So right now, it's simply on hold. Uh, they are not going to be able to deliver by December 2020, so look for that stuff early in January 2021. Uh, sorry, early 2021, not January, early 2021. Great. And one last question. How do you effectively incorporate classroom dialogue? Um, be, I, I usually do it through the, script, the, the series of scripts that I have developed, okay? So I'm not sure if she's talking about the interaction that the student, the teachers and students would have about the material or are you talking about practicing for the interview? I believe she's referring to practicing for the interview. Practicing for the interview, if you go to uscitizenpod.com, go up to the upper bar and go to N400 PDFs. If she takes a look at that, there's a whole series of scripts there that uh, teachers and students can use to practice for the interview, and they're absolutely free. And I, 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 I made them small so you can start from the, from the very simplest and then gradually go all the way up to a more advanced level. Great. Thank you, Jennifer. Okay. Um, so I think our time is coming to close. I really want to kind of race through this. We have ESL Library. They have some really good lesson plans related to the presidents or aspect, different aspects of uh, American civics life. There's a really great section in here about American citizenship. Um, there's some really great ESL and adult ed newspapers, and all these have online components. So I'm sure we know about Easy English from elizabethclare.com, but did you know that she also has a YouTube channel where she usually reads the, the top uh, articles from each issue? So that's been very interesting to follow. We have this uh, change agent from, I believe it's, uh, is it New England Literacy Resource Center? They did a really good section, uh, a magazine um, for um, the census, and they basically continue to come up with uh, really uh, great issues uh, that are appropriate for the adult ed classroom. And New Readers Press, you can access their, their uh, news for you online, and they have um, really great things related to the census and also to the election. So all these, these groups will be coming up with more information about the census and the upcoming election. And um, I don't use this myself, but my, my fellow uh, upper level teachers do. They use Newzella, and Newzella, I believe, is free till the end of the school year. And a lot of people are pulling, uh, they're supplementing their citizenship classes with the information from Newzella. Um, I really love VOA, and last uh, the first time I went to Washington, I was able to um, inter, um, tour their their facilities, which is right across from the American Indian American American Indian Museum, and they are really dedicating themselves to press freedom. So they're looking at uh, information about press freedom, and they also have a series for uh, maybe intermediate ESL students about news literacy, which is super critical during this time where we're trying to get appropriate information related to COVID-19 and to the election. VOA Learning English has an incredible um, archive of information related to history, um, making of the Constitution, the different branches, and they also have, they separated this information out by their articles, by their um, audio, and by their video. So for instance, if you want to use, listen, if you want to develop a lesson plan 
related to listening, or if you wanted to do something with the clothes exercises, et cetera, et cetera, you can pick and choose what kind of resource that you want. So um, go to VOA Learning English, or sorry, learningenglish.voanews.com. You take a look at their U.S. history section, you look at the audio menu, and you can find more information related that you can use for civics. Um, this is not exactly related to citizenship, but it is related to civics. We speak New York, uh, NYC from the city of New York.us uh, delivered a really, really great um, like telenovela series in the, the late uh, 2000s uh, related to different uh, civics questions. I really love this one about love and money where these two people are trying to date, but they have uh, they learn about banking and money at the same time. So this has been really interesting to see new immigrants basically negotiating uh, their lives in the United States. There's things that are related to health, uh, domestic violence, all sorts of things. They And they have great PDFs and uh, attended information that support each one of these, uh, each one of, each one of these videos. They also did a new series in 2018, and they just added two new videos related to, uh, to the census. So please take a look at this information from We Speak NYC. NYC we Speak NYC has these really great pocket comments, and this one is, um, this one is related to um, uh, immigration and what she does, how she's been lied to by different notarios and things like that. So taking a look at this information, sharing with your students and discussing them, discussing that with them can really save a lot of hard way, heartache and could bring high interest to your civic citizenship classes. Um, I'm going to go on to mobile technology. Is that okay? Okay. Um, these are... This is a 60-second second civics podcast. This is for higher-level students. However, there is, um, you can see it on Twitter. Sometimes there's video, sometimes there's audio, but there's always a follow-up quiz on their website. So, for instance, they'll have this question, a, citizenship, a citizen is a person who, and then you choose it. So, student only listens to one minute of content and then responds to a question. So, it's a really, really helpful uh, podcast and really helpful for uh, appropriate for intermediate uh, students. Citizenship Works is a really good uh, mobile app and uh, the most important things besides the fact that it's available in multiple language, it enables a person to access um, the Justice Department and find low cost legal help. So that's usually a lot of times where you as a teacher cannot answer these legal questions. You can help students find the legal help that they need to resolve their, their issues quickly. Immigration podcasts. I really like to, to uh, keep up with what's happening with immigration. Um, so taking a look at all these progress, podcasts, Immigration Nerds, only in America with Ali Narani and Tempest Toss are really, really great and basically gives you a more of an insight um, knowledge uh, about immigration. Uh, might be a little too advanced for even advanced ESL students, but I think being an informed as a teacher is going to be very important. Um, VOA uh, uh, English also has a um, app where they have they pick one or two of their more important uh, um, the stories of the day, and they students can listen as their the story is being highlighted. So please take a look at this. And finally, I'm going to go on to the video content. Anything else before I go to video content? Okay. Okay, um, USCIS.gov is on YouTube. They talk about the filing online. They really want uh, people to move to filing online and creating their uh, online accounts. But um, one of the things that is not on there when you go to USCIS.gov and just simply look at the videos, they don't. They, you don't see their civics playlist, and the civics playlist is really important because you have 
one USCIS IS officer looking dead into the camera and asking you questions. And it's really important to see the diversity of the USCIS officers and seeing that they're human beings too. So it's been very interesting to look at those officers and going through those questions um, as opposed to looking at red flashcards. So that's going to be really helpful. I'm sure you're familiar with the ESSA group online. They have some really great lessons. And um, uh, so we have, uh, so she talks about uh, lessons and uh, interview practices, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we have my own uh, uh, channel online and um, not only do I put up uh, my interviews, but I created a lot of playlists like um, information for, um, I put up together a playlist for Ramadan so um, my Muslim students could uh, practice and see appropriate content during their, their holy time. Uh, we have, I've tried to put up daily information and um, so, et cetera, et cetera. I'm almost done. We have some more information about VOA on YouTube, VOA Learning English, um, Listen and Read Along, which is basically you can read along with some of the VOA stories. I want to talk two more minutes about, uh, I've been taking a lot of the census uh, PSAs and embedding them into Google Forms for listening activities and to make sure that my students understand the content that they, uh, they, they're listening to. Uh, I've taken a lot of things from VOA and embedded them and created quizzes from them on my blog, my blog sites. Um, I've used Edpuzzle a lot. Edpuzzle is really great because it's a, it's a extension from Google that people can basically play a video and then automatically stop a video and they can ask you multiple choice questions or you can fill in a short a short sentences about them um, they have really good professional development on that so please take a look at uh, uh, please take a look at Edpuzzle and Paradeca Nearpod I want to show you the last slides I have is census.gov, and I took a very old video that they had that talked about apportionment, which is really an abstract concept, content, uh, concept, but I created a transcript. So how do you create a transcript? You go to the dot, dot, dot on the bottom, you open the transcript, the transcript, I make sure that it's English, and, and then I basically toggle the timestamps get rid of the time stamps, time stamps, copy and paste that into another, uh, to another um, uh, file. And then from there, the students can basically, or teachers can create close, uh, close uh, exercises for that. And family fun, um, I can't recommend get epic enough because you have all sorts of civics content that teach, the, the parents can read along with their kids or the kids can read along with the parents about whatever they're, they're learning. Um, iCivics, which is really helpful for especially your higher level or more advanced students. So the students play these games and they come back and report back to their, to the, uh, their fellow students about what happened during the games. I put together, I love jigsaw puzzles and I always look for uh, jigsaw puzzles related to civics content. And so, um, these are the challenges that I'm looking forward to, and um, that's about it. Great. Thank you so much, Jennifer. We really appreciate all this wonderful information. Yeah. Um, really appreciate the great work you've done. And I also want to acknowledge our sponsor again. So, Robert, would you like to say a few words? Sure. I'm just going to share a quick screen, too. Thank you to Jennifer and to all these amazing resources. You've really put everything uh, in everybody's hands in such a great way. And for those of you who happen to use Burlington English, just know that so much of what Jennifer has, has covered is also at your fingertips, everything from stop. history and government and citizenship. So we thank you very, very much. I'll turn it back over to, uh, to Sharon, to Jennifer, once again, thank you. And again, on this Teacher Appreciation Week, thank you to all for all the amazing work you're doing. Stay safe out there, everybody. Thank you, Sharon. Thank, Thank you. you Thank you so much, Robert. Jennifer, any last words before we part? Uh, 
I just want to say that the most important thing that we could possibly do in this situation is maintain contact with our students. So it's more, remember, the citizenship interview is something that takes place outside of the classroom. We're all in a situation where we're outside of the classroom. Uh, being able to connect and communicate is the most important thing that we can do. It's not only a soft skill, it's actually the source of our strength. So um, I'm looking forward to, um, uh, if you have any questions, please contact me. I'd be happy to answer them. And um, just thank you very much for being here. And Wonderful. caring about your students. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you to all the attendees. And we look forward to seeing you all tomorrow at 2 Eastern Standard for our next webinar. Thank you again, Jennifer. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye now.